The Apostle Paul writes to the church at Rome in Romans chapter 12 and verse 11 and says, Do not be slothful in business. That word slothful means slow, sluggish, or lazy. Do not be slothful in business, but fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Hi, my name is Charles Vance, and I'm along with Chief Strategist Terry Saka, and we're here today on The Wealth Transfer. Hello, Charles. Good to see you. Good, Good evening, there. everyone. Welcome to The Wealth Transfer. Uh, we pray the blessings to you tonight, and we pray the wisdom and understanding of the Lord come upon you, and the spirit of truth of what's really going on in our lives here fall upon you. We pray health and healing to your family as well, and this information that we keep sharing with you, we just want you to understand that there's two components. It's the wisdom of, as the Bible says, do not partake in the wisdom of the, of the world, but partake in the wisdom of the Spirit. And so we're here to try to help you kind of understand that this is really important. It's, you know, we talk a lot about, I know, the economies and the finances. This is kind of all related. Uh, but, you know, it's really important that we understand that we live our lives according to the Bible. And when we did, we were a wealthy and prosperous nation. And because we've grieved the Holy Spirit, uh, we've engaged in this, we're now in this cycle of transfer of wealth from east to west. What's getting ready to hit us is extraordinarily hurtful. You think in 2008 it was rough, folks. You haven't seen it. Wait till this summer and beyond. It's going to be different. So, Terry, we, was talk we were talking before the break uh, how that uh, people uh, from some foreign lands mm -hmm. that we've done business with for years seem to uh, be coming to America and buying tangible assets. You up. know, yeah, that's a great Is point. The way you said that, you know, the way you just said tangible. You're right. We were talking about land and housing, and, and you're right. No, they're buying all tangible assets. They're buying gold and silver. Yeah, I was in Africa uh, a few years ago trying to, <laughs> I was a little silly. My wife warned me. <laughs> but uh, I was looking, just trying to see if I could find supply, you know, steadily, you know, under market to maybe help uh, people. But um, that didn't work out too well. I'd, if I ever go back there again, it's going to be for missions only, not business. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I did find over there, though, unbelievable Chinese intrusion buying up everything. In Africa. They're buying up all hard tangible assets, mineral mines, gold mines, silver mines, mm -hmm. oil, gas, iron ores, you name it, they're buying it. And I, South America, I have colleagues down there telling me the same thing. They're pay, I personally, and that's just me, I think they're using the cash they say they have in the bank as reserve dollars. I think they're spending them and telling us they're there and using them to buy these assets. Now, that's just purely an opinion. I have no evidence of that. Uh, but they're buying not just these these assets around the world. They're coming here to the United States and buying our land. Well, your business is based out of uh, southern Florida. Southern Florida, and, uh, and we will be having a branch in, in North Carolina soon as well. Uh, but so. but the, the physical location there right now, the, there are people in foreign countries that are coming in. I've got a friend down just north yes. of you, yeah. and he says they're, the foreign folk are coming in buying up the land like crazy like right crazy, now. crazy, yes. And you know what's very interesting? Now, they're not buying it because they don't think it's worth anything. Right. But they're buying it because the value of it has leveled off or come down to a spot that where they, they think that now yeah. it's going to begin to increase. They're cost averaging for sure. And, and although we probably are going to have a, another leg down, I contend we will have another pretty good leg down in valuation, um, it's just still a very good time to pick up. And if it does, you do a little bit more. Um, similar with tar tangible assets like the gold and silver. When the prices drop, you just buy a little bit more. Mm -hmm. It's called you know dollar cost averaging in. Uh, but as we are saying them buying the land, they're buying this. As Americans are avoiding gold and silver because they're just not paying attention. The Chinese are buying it up. Well, just we've, for, we've been trained it's too much trouble to buy. Not just trouble. You know what, Charles? Not just trouble. They're trying to make you think it's a, a super high-risk investment. And I get it. You know, there's, there's supposedly risk to everything we do in life from walking across the street. But I'm saying it's a hard asset. So at the end of the day, as long as you don't sell it, it can go up and down. It doesn't you know, matter. People, my wife and I are in the, uh, we own real estate. That, uh, real estate's down. Yeah. Yeah. Real estate's down. And we started buying it while it was down. Yeah. And uh, right. it's going back up now. Mm -hmm. And we're selling some stuff that we've got and making substantial profits yeah, on, sure. on it. Uh, other, there are other people that are afraid of it. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen people, we own rental property, and I've seen people. Uh, we are uh, we have a nonprofit organization that owns a 50 unit or part of a 50 unit apartment building. I've had people call me uh, and say that they sold their house uh, because they just didn't want 
uh, real estate anymore. They don't want to own real yes. estate. They wanted to be in a place they're renting now, which yeah. is great for people that own because then the profit's coming, of course, to us. And people are letting their wealth be transferred away from them. What they could be doing is investing yes. every month right. in a piece of property or investing in silver or gold or whatever that yeah. would be earth assets. Well, I think, and it come, I think a lot of it is laziness, and I don't mean that in a mean way. I think we're really tired and we're, we're trying really hard to, you know, under, we're just working our families, well, you know. be and, not slothful in business. Though. I know, exactly. Uh, it's an instruction. Absolutely. It, and it's a biblical instruction. It's yes. not something we just made up because we're business people. I pastor a church mm -hmm. uh, and, and I'm in the business world as well because right. I, I believe with all of my heart, Revelation 1 and 6, that we've been made kings and priests Absolutely. unto God. That we're supposed to be in charge of spiritual things and in charge of material things as yeah. well. Absolutely. Things in the earth. That's biblical. And I find myself moving that same direction. I may be in business now uh, doing this, but I'm definitely you know, ministry oriented. It's sure. just God's just setting it up. Right now I have to do this because I've been instructed to by by the Lord, and uh, so we know why this is important. But, sure. Um, yeah, good steward and managers, because what is coming is very real, but what are we listening to? The wisdom of the world or the wisdom of the Spirit? And here's some headlines. I'm just going to fire off four or five headlines. <laughs> this is amazing stuff. Hey, these are headlines. I, I don't even print these reports out anymore because it's like I can give you so much information, you would, you would fall off your chair. If, why we're not buying this stuff, Russia last year... 600 tons of gold. I wonder where they get it, but 600 tons. Why? Because of the way the dollar is being handled, and they're, they're fearful that the dollar is going to collapse, being that we're, we're the reserve currency. 600 tons the now. Wor the world reserve, reserve currency. currency. Yes, but as I, we okay. explained in weeks past, that's being marginalized, right? right? So Russia not only bought 600 tons of gold, which is an astronomical amount of gold in one year, they're good. they said they're going to continue to buy. China buying gold. You know, last year, gold exports out of the United States, main place, Hong Kong, going to China. But it's not the government, it's private hedge funds selling out gold to the Chinese. They're buying it. I'm telling you, America, we're not taking this seriously. And hey, in the end, those will perish for lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. But I'm not saying it because I believe in this and that. And, and, and I'm telling you from Russia, they're doing it. China's doing it. China tells their people to own silver. They're hoarding it. India, huge hoarders of silver. Headlines, of, I just said about China. When China gets, as we said before in the currency war, when China gets 4,000 tons of gold, folks, they can be a reserve currency. Don't think it's coming. The BRIC nations know exactly what they're doing. Headline, Germany, very concerned about the currency war. Japan, printing money so their currency is the cheapest, which, of course, everyone else is engaged in. Now, they just had uh, some information that, oh, it's not a big deal. But I'm telling you, they, it's already a currency war. These are headlines, and this, is, this doesn't stop. So why are we, now the media and the outlets, they're not telling you this stuff. But what I'm telling you are facts. These are reports coming right out. Where are we listening for our information? Why are 90%, 95% of our assets in mutual funds, in IRAs, in the stock market, bonds? Why? And with all this information you're getting, why? Why are you listening to the wisdom of the world when the Bible says we should be in the wisdom of the Spirit? Terry, first of all, we should be good managers. And, uh, Wouldn't that be so, part of this then, being a good manager, being oh, in the wisdom of the Spirit for your guidance? You know, I, I, I talked to people, I mentioned this on our last program, that uh, I did a survey, and I do these when I go out and do financial seminars, but I, I did a, a survey in a, in a small group, less than 200 people, how many people had a credit score of over 700, 700 or plus. Mm -hmm. Well, seven people, if I remember the, the number, it was under 10. And that included me and my wife. Under 10 people, that's 5% or less of the people. These are Christian folk. These are spirit-filled folk. You know, I'm, I'm, I don't know who's watching. Uh, maybe you're born again. Maybe you're not born again. Regardless, the people that are getting themselves set for, for wealth to be transferred to them are people that are people of integrity. I've read books by people that are wealthy, very, very wealthy people, billionaires, People that are, honestly, I question their character as far as like moral character is concerned. But I want to see what they're doing financially. 
they won't do business with people that have low integrity. Mm -hmm. It's one of the rules of, of the wealthy that if you don't have high integrity, we won't do business with you. And I've seen that that's, that seems to be a rule everywhere yeah. uh, when it comes to people that are of wealth because they've got to, to be able to substantiate themselves as a person that's not slothful in business before they begin to do business with those people. Well, in all fairness, Charles, to, to a lot of the people, because I, I think I understand that. We, we've been so wrapped up in the world, the system of the world, which is ran by the enemy, the materialism, the media, the music, the pretty bling bling. We've been so interested in that that we've overextended ourselves, credit card, debts, sure. things of nature. We were deceived by the enemy. And, these, and now it's time to wake up and realize that if we f focus on the wisdom of the Spirit, we then can walk in that integrity because we start listening to the information that's accurate mm -hmm. and not being misled. And that see? accuracy is, is Jesus said, I am the way, the, the truth. truth. Yes. That, that's the truth. Yes. Uh, his word is true. And Paul you, said, and you so. said you're, you're probably right. You know, people, a lot of people are watching this. We assume people are born again. And you know what? If you're not born again... If Jesus Christ is not Lord of your life, why don't you take this moment right now and ask Him in your heart. Say, Lord, I recognize I've been sinful. I repent. Come into my heart right now. Be Lord of my life. Invite Him in. He'll come. He loves you. He's waiting for not just to be a part of your life. He's waiting to guide you into the wisdom of the Spirit so you can be part of the wealth transfer and start gaining the integrity and the wisdom and the insight needed to be here for when it comes. Terry, I've had people tell me, um, hey, I've got plenty. Uh, I'm, I'm fine. I don't need any more money. But it's not about you always. No, it's not God, about us And always. God does not bless us for us. Now, yeah, granted, He loves His children just like we and, do. And He does want us to be blessed. Well, sure. See, there, don't you want overflow. your child? Absolutely. I mean, I, oh, my gosh, I have this little girl now. This little baby. <laughs> oh, I can only think, man, now I tell you what. We can't do the rest of the program on your baby. No, now. but boy, you say, <laughs> she says, Daddy, I'm going to go, boom, what? You know? I mean, I get it. Our Father loves us that Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Absolutely. So He wants us to not just be wealthy, but healthy. But, you know, He wants us to be happy, joyous, kind to one another. And I just and really we're created to be like Him. Yes. And we should be such a wealth of not just information, but of goods that we can transfer when people are in need. I, I told you this before the program started. I've had so many people tell me, I wish I had money to give in on this project or that project. You know, we do, our church does five days a week television yeah. uh, here on CTN, actually. Um, we're on the 11 o'clock every eve, every weekday evening. Yep. Uh, and uh, we, we preach a bunch of things. We don't just talk about money. We do this oh, program. Oh, I know. With, you got some good <laughs> stuff. I tell you the, what, folks, <laughs> if you want some really good teaching of, I mean, I'll talk about everything, going way back to the beginning of the Bible all the way through. Uh, uh, Pastor Charles has some phenomenal stuff that I think will really, well, really thanks. bless you. I, I wasn't doing that for No, that, but I but, want them to know because I've studied that. I've right. listened to it, and I love it. And so I think they, they should be paying attention if they but, want some good teaching. But the whole purpose of what we're doing, uh, we have people, I've had people come to me and say, you know, I wish I could give up, put, put, we upgraded our mm -hmm. television suite and our television cameras just uh, and switchboard and a bunch of stuff uh, last year. And I've had people come to me at church and say, I just wish I had some money I could put in on that. You know, I just don't have it. Well, wouldn't it be wonderful if you did? Well, I mean, when the time came, we support a mission in Haiti uh, that Kelly and I were down there last year right after that earthquake, a uh, year before last, I guess mm -hmm. it was, right after that earthquake. Uh, horrible devastation. You couldn't believe it. Actually, you could look, close your eyes and turn and look another direction. You could not, it, your brain couldn't hold it. The devastation was so bad. I, I told a gentleman that had just inherited several million dollars. Uh, I've known him for a long time. He, uh, I said, uh, he said, I don't need anything. My kids don't need anything. He said, I got all I need. I said, there are people starving to death in Haiti. He said, I don't know one of them. Just yeah. like he didn't care. But you know what? That, Charles, that is resonating with me because I hear that a lot. Oh, I'm all right. I'm sad. Well, yeah. whoa, whoa, wait, wait. We're talking about wisdom of the world, wisdom of the spirit. Let, let me say that's selfishness. 
Let me just say that. And, and if it's that, selfishness. That it's just you, that you're yes. okay and you're not concerned about anybody else, that's selfishness. And that's wrong because God didn't bless you to be selfish. He doesn't mm -hmm. mind you being blessed. Exactly. But he, be, he wants you to be blessed so you can bless others. Well, and Kelly said that, my wife has said that thousands of times since I've known her. We're blessed to be a blessing. Yes. We've, you've heard it. It's almost a cliche in the church world. Yeah, but I mean. But it's it, truth. It's truth. So that we can change people's lives. Listen, we're not doing the, the television empowered. We're not doing our television program uh, just because we're on some kind of a, a buzz that we want to do television. Even this one. I'm, we're not man, doing I'm that a shy person. Man, you think I wanted to be out in a public spotlight? Well, you know, God kind of kicked my butt that way. You we're know? doing this to get information to people because right. if you don't have right information, if you don't have the truth, you can't change your life. Yes. And if you get the information and you're still sitting on your hands, then you're what the Bible calls slothful. You're slow, sluggish, lazy. You know how many people we've talked to, they have given all that we were given all the truth and all the information, and they still don't know what to do. They're still, and I tell you, they're bound by the, in the, the you know, you tell that to a Christian, they get so offended. It's amazing. Sure. But they're bound by the enemy in the concept of how do you not know to put your faith in what God gave you dominion over? Right. How are you not listening? Oh, I need to hear from God. I get it, but God already told you in the Bible what to do, gave you authority over certain things. I mean, he's already telling you, get protected. Now, if you're no doing doubt. a piece of paper investment, I get that. But when you're buying a hard asset of some kind, the rest of the world's doing it. Terry, people, people have said stuff uh, to me like, uh, well, I'm, I'm asking God, you know, to show me whether I should tithe or not. Well, here, let me help you with that. <laughs> right. now, all you got to do is pick your Bible up. Yeah. It's Old Testament and New Testament. Right. There's no question about it. You've already been given the instruction to be a tither and a giver. Not just a tither, but a tither and a giver. What for? Because God wants to bless you. Jesus said, press down, shaking together, running over, men giving unto your bosom. Guess what? If it's running over, that means that's more than what I can even take care of. Yes. It's got to go somewhere. As Kelly and, says, exceedingly abundantly, yeah. more than you can ask. And she's like, I can think I can ask. You know, yeah, and I absolutely. love when, when she says but it. That's I love, God's you know, will really for funny. us. That's what we've missed is yeah. it's God's will. Third John verse 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. But there's a, there, there's a contingency, even as thy soul doth prosper. So our souls, our mind, our will, our intellect, our emotion, our reasoning. Yeah. So God says you've got to get your thinking right before yes. I'm going to be able to prosper you yeah. and cause health to come into now, your life. Now there it is. Now the thinking right, soul prospers you in your soul. What I find talking to people and what my other dealers and what we hear is there is a lot of Christians, they're angry. They're bitter, untrustworthy, they're, they're unkind. Um, it's really kind of surprising to be honest. And uh, I, what I'm realizing is because a lot of it is they're focusing too much on the wisdom of the world. They live in sure. the wisdom of the world and they're not living in the grace of God that they think they are or they wouldn't be so hey, upset. You, you think they're upset about the business world. They're upset when we preach something like God wants you to be wealthy. I've had people call us and just rip us. But the Bible that, says I know everywhere. it's what the Bible I mean, says. You know it's what the Bible says. And we give people enough scripture to know that it's Bible. We just did, I just did a thing last year. God would not let me rest on this. I did, uh, I narrated, and I've got them over there on another shelf. I can't get to them right now. I narrated almost 400 scriptures that point people to what they should do to have divine wealth in their life things not to do that would sabotage your wealth and, and promises that would create faith for wealth. Uh, I've, I, I've done almost, and, and it's just called wealth scriptures. How this, many this, are in there? This almost 400. And if Jesus, if John says Jesus now, is the word, the word is Jesus. Yeah. If we speak those scriptures out, well, what happens? Well, here, my point is, is how do you get away from that's not God's will for you? <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, yeah. I, I mean, if you've got almost 400 scriptures that show you the patriarchs being wealthy, that show you that it's God's will for you to be wealthy, that there's promise after promise in the scripture for you to be wealthy, but there's also instruction that God gives you to be wealthy. I just read one to you, and I'm reading now this little booklet actually that comes with this, like a topical Bible, two CDs in this, in this wealth scriptures thing. Uh, this, and, yeah. and, and all people, all it's for, it's just scripture. 
is all it's for. It's to get the body of Christ in a mindset and get their heart set that I've got to do something. I can't just sit here and do nothing. You know, Terry, you, you can say, Romans 10, 9 says, if you'll confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. I had a guy years ago that was working for me in the construction business, one of my subcontractors. I asked him one day, I said, are you a heathen? Are, are you an infidel, an unbeliever? He said, no, I'm not. I, I know. <laughs> I'm, I, I said, well, here, take this Bible and read. And I handed him the Bible and told him to read Romans chapter 10 and verse 9. He read it slowly and he said, uh, Jesus is Lord. He said, what's that mean? I said, he's the boss of your life, in charge of your life. Do you believe that? Uh, well, uh, yeah. <laughs> I said, do you believe God raised him from the dead? That's the next, the next line in there. He said, yeah, yeah, I believe that. I said, uh, and he looked at me and said, do you think a fellow could be saved and not know it? He, but he, he said, here's Charlie. They called me Charlie in the construction, but he said, Charlie, I know better. I just don't do better. Now, see, that's called foolishness. That, but that. When you know better and don't do better. And that's why yeah. Paul said, don't be slothful in business. And that's what we see when maybe they just don't know better, Charles. But we see that, that why are people not in hard, tangible assets? And why are they in the system of the world like stock market bonds when we've shown and proven that if you would be in hard, tangible assets, you'll be wealthier? Be diversified. Look, look, here, look, look, for some reason, this keeps coming up in my spirit, and I need to do this yeah, on this program. Yeah. There's uh, over 50% of the American population is on some sort of government entitlement check. Mm -hmm. Scary to me. First of all, the government doesn't have anything to entitle you to uh, because they're... Well, they take it from in, someone. Yes, yeah, they yeah. take it from someone, but it's, they're insolvent. They're sending you fake stuff. And when the system falls down, you're, you are going to be a slave to the government system. That's And you I'm need to going, get yourself yes. in a position where that you're not a slave to the government. Yes, the, the government. You, you don't need to be a slave to your social security check. You don't need to be a slave to a welfare check or to food stamps. You don't need to be a slave to any of that stuff because I'm telling you, there is going to be something that takes place. There's going to be an equalization of, of some stuff that takes place in the near future that if you have not set yourself in a position that you have done the things God told you to do to have wealth transferred into your life, everything that you even think you have, Bible said, Jesus said, it'll be taken away from you. It's dangerous, scary. For those that should have, be more will be them. given. And I think yeah. it's the wisdom of the Spirit, not the wisdom of the world. Absolutely. So I, you know what, I, I'll just say this for that purpose. For those that have assets to protect and preserve, if you want to contact uh, you know, Cornerstone, uh, you can register on the internet or call us. Uh, we'll send you out this packet of information if you want to learn how to diversify the assets that you do have loaded with information and wisdom uh, that will guide you into that decision making. Oh, Terry, Very you, important. you've been in the uh, you've been in the stock stock market business. Oh yeah, yeah. licenses and all that stuff. That's I understand it. That's why it's like I don't say I don't know. I know because I've come from not only did I come from the darkness of not being you know fully on fire in Jesus, uh, but uh, I've come from that world and I get it. I've seen both sides, and all I know is. There is no doubt where there is light, there is some tremendous truth, but the peace and the prosperity that is there for you and waiting for us. Yeah, and it's all there. And again, you know, I don't know how much we can stress this. This month, the last three, four programs, we've really been stressing that it is so important for us to take dominion over what God put man in dominion of. Yeah. And it's everything that he created. It's not something fake. You know, some people don't even know the term when we hold up a, a this is a, this is really a fake, fake $50 bill. This is not a real one that's printed, it's a copy. Uh, but this is fake. Uh, it, it's called fiat. People, yeah. I use this terminology in Canada. Canada has a system just almost like America. The yep. banking system, it's still run by the, the World Bank, uh, by the International Monetary Fund. And I held up one of these. There was about 200, 300 people in a meeting that I was doing. And I said, this is fiat money. And I was in a French church and the lady was translating. She went, what? <laughs> I said, it's fiat. And I had to spell it for her. She said, what's that mean? She was translating, didn't mm -hmm. know what it mean. This lady was a, uh, her and her husband were business people. They were pastors of a church and did not know what fiat meant, that it was fake. 
that it was just fake. All business people know what that means. They just keep printing it. They just keep printing it, and it's worth less and less. It's causing inflation, which causes, it looks like, tangible assets to increase in value, but what they're they doing don't, is right. they're just retaining value, yes. and this stuff keeps going down. Yeah. I think a, a couple of a months ago on one of the programs, you said it's like cutting a piece of pie, mm -hmm. and you don't have enough pieces, so you cut it thinner. Yeah. You, you, you slice the pieces But what up happens? Smaller. What does that sound like? You'll starve. Well, yeah, eventually, eventually you're going to start because I, there's, there can't be enough to go around to everybody. That's right. And I know for a fact, because I've been there uh, just recently, too, when I was in the Army in Germany. Uh, I remember the day when the dollar, they loved to have a dollar. If you had a dollar, like, yeah, yeah, bring your dollar on, bring your dollar on. Uh, they loved it. And I went back recently to London, and no kidding, they didn't want the dollar. The Middle East, they used to love the dollar. They don't want the dollar. Nobody wants our dollar, folks. They don't want it. So if they did want it before, they don't want it now. What we've told you about the BRICS, the wisdom of the world has got you blinded. Break off those scales over your eyes. Get to the wisdom of the Spirit. Get Because 400 scriptures telling you about transfer of wealth and prosperity that God has in your life. And, it, and like we were saying... Hey, it, I, it, I had to edit them because I had too many for yeah. the CDs and too many for the book. And he's tall on us. Now, it, obviously, he loves his children. He wants to bless his children. I mean, you know, I, I mean, I'm fortunate because not only do I have a baby girl now, but I even have a grown-up daughter. I mean, God's got a funny sense of humor. We thought we were done, and I have this blessing of a beautiful older daughter, and now I got a new baby one, so I get to keep going. But uh, it's to be blessings to someone else. Now, if we have wealth, and if we're in the right place, if we're in the, the dominion area that God gave us of the earth and wisdom of the Spirit, and we degenerate wealth, we can help more people to salvation, feed more poor. We can do more. Yeah. And I believe that's by design. If we were all in this stuff by the, at the beginning of things of the earth, we'd be so wealthy, we'd be able to help every hungry child in the world. And, it, and it's simply, we have quit following the instruction of God when yeah. God told us to take dominion over everything that He created. That word dominion means to make it subject to us, which means it's under our control. We yeah. control it. And what we've allowed is a, a, a lost system, the system of the world, to take control over things that God created and told us to have control over. Right. We've got to take that control back. We'll do it by, by investing in tangible assets, um, land, property, food, uh, houses, uh, silver, gold, platinum, whatever you want to invest in, invest in something. If you, if you want to transfer IRAs even, Terry, your company does that, don't you? Oh, yeah, and you don't, there's really no penalty for doing that, and we can assist you to go into the physical assets, and they store it on your behalf in a vault. It's real. There isn't anything fake about it. You buy the asset and store it or away in the IRA buy, program. People can buy what's, spot, what's called spot silver and spot oh, gold, gold which, silver, which you just platinum. buy this stuff and take yeah. it home and put it wherever you yeah, want. Yeah, you can you have get, it delivered to your house, you can too. dig a hole in the back. Sure. Whatever. Platinum, but platinum. people need to do something. Something. Don't, yeah. don't keep digging a hole and sticking your stuff in. If I tell something. you, you keep walking straight, you're going to fall into a pit, and you do, what am I supposed to do at that point when you're in the pit? Can't help. Can't help. We want to be here to help you. God loves you. Next week, we're going to talk more about those currency wars. Absolutely. Well, hey, tell somebody that you can watch these programs on demand on Terry's website. Uh, they're there. Oh, yeah. Uh, and if you missed one, uh, tell, somebody about, tell somebody about this program. We'll see you next time for The Wealth Transfer.